Thanks so much for joining us for poster session 11 about demographic and clinical factors affecting pediatric survival in South Republic of Congo. We have a repeat presenter today. And without further ado, I'm going to hand off to him and he will present um, this wonderful research. Thank you. Uh, Dr. LeCant, uh, and uh, thank you so much. Excuse me, just one moment. You're breaking up quite a bit. So, um, yeah, just a little bit. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Yes, that's perfect. Thank you. All right. So, yeah, as I was saying, my name is Chibambe Nathaniel Chimbombu. Democratic. Okay, I'm sorry again. You're st you're still really breaking up. Let me try to move around because. Okay. <laughs> um, um, all right. Can you hear me better now? That's much better. Thank you. Should I? Um, I am presenting with four hospitals. I'm so sorry. It's it's breaking up. Like you you introduce your name and then it just goes into like a robot voice. Uh. Can you hear me better now? I can hear you better now. That's it. Okay. So, uh, as I was saying, I'm presenting on factors. Uh, I think that uh, it's a hospital located in product. South Africa continues um, to have four out of 1,000 um, for children younger than five years old. So challenges are accentuated in the DR. in Africa with a population of just people. in the DRC continue to vision which so are uh, reflected in the DRC which is the the, the It's a hospital because a really on tree profit. Active casualties exceeding 12,000 individuals. So, pediatric well being in South Kivu. Of the highest in the DRC. So these alarming facts led to the need to conduct this uh, pediatric mortality in South Kivu in light of the region's restricted access to necessary adequate medical care. So uh, noting reducing preventable pediatric death uh, mirrors childhood uh, health and forecast national development. So our objective basically was to work with partners in the DRC to detect factors that endanger, um, you know, or protect pediatric survival in South Kivu. 
So in our method, what we did was we collected patient data from 2018 to 2019, and we performed our version uh, using the LME4 package to facilitate mixed effect modeling, uh, which basically considers both continuous and categorical variables. Uh, the odd ratio and the confidence intervals were computed, and the multicollinearity was also evaluated. So in our results section, what we found was that refer uh, referrals from external clinics, inadequate maternal education or diagnosis of malnutrition or meningitis upon admission. It's four o'clock. Okay. Um, uh, uh, diagnosis of malnutrition or meningitis upon admission are risk factors that affect basically uh, pediatric uh, survival. Uh, conversely, paternal unemployment and longer hospitalization are protective factors. Uh, let me try to go over them actually separately. Uh, regarding factors that negatively affect survival, referral is impacted by poverty. Uh, people are unable to afford transportation to Ponzi uh, Hospital. Uh, most people travel over 160 kilometers, and also there is safety concerns due to ongoing armed conflict in the region. We also noted that insufficient, um, insufficient resources, financial means, and knowledge are factors that are negatively um, influencing pediatric uh, survival at Ponzi. Meningitis is also a negative factor because its treatment in the region is impaired by the lack of me uh, medical resources for therapeutic delivery. Now, regarding factors that positively affect survival, we appreciated that survival correlates positively with, um, with patient exposure to medical care, which is reflected by the length of their hospitalization. This is basically understandable given uh, you know, regional shortage in access to healthcare and basic survival needs such as nutrition, uh, the lack of which we also identify as a risk factor for, for survival. Now, the protective role of paternal unemployment in pediatric survival basically aligns with a reversal of traditional roles in which women have assumed the responsibility of generating revenue for the family. So what's, what's been happening is that decade-long military conflict in South Kivu have facilitated women to finance the family economy through agriculture, while men transitioned to embrace child care duties when they are not at war. So such reassignment of female and male roles explain greater paternal participation in the daily holistic care of, of the child. So fathers are promising uh, domestic resources who can interface with uh, with a community-based healthcare network that would uh, eventually streamline medical access for their children. So um, in conclusion, what I would say that with all these ongoing local conflict and mortality uh, among uh, pediatric uh, you know, patients, there is a need to, capital, uh, to, to capitalize on the positive factors and develop strategic preparation and allocation of healthcare resources to, to, to minimize delays in healthcare access. One solution is a hub and spoke referral model in which advanced resources, including medication and personnel are centralized and distributed peripherally to promote evidence-based care that is delivered with minimal delays. Uh, I believe that this network can also be uh, can also distribute essential nutrition uh, and educational resources to support the social fabric of South Kivu while the region converges on political stability. Thank you so much. Uh, I will take any question. If there was any question, I forgot to put my email in there. But uh, um, if there was any question, I. I'll be more than happy to answer those. Oh, yes. And if you would like, please feel free to put your email in the chat. I'm sorry yeah, about please. the issues with the, um, with, uh, I don't know why the system was turning your voice into a robot there. But... It, it's certainly my internet. It's not on your side. Because oh, okay. the internet is not that great. So um, oh. I apologize for that. I just put my email in there. Uh, anyone who has a question about this research, please feel free to email me. Uh, and also, 
um, this research has just got published in November. Uh, so uh, for those who need a copy of it, I'm sure if you type the title on PubMed, you should be able to see uh, this publication. So thank you so much for this opportunity again. Oh, thank you. And um, fascinating work that you're doing um, really highlights a part of the world that probably a lot of people um, in the U.S. context don't know much about um, mm -hmm. and what's going on there in terms of, um, you know, ensuring pediatric health outcomes. And it's such important work. I really appreciate you joining us yet again. Look forward to hearing more and engaging with you in other contexts as well. Thank but, you so um, much, Dr. Lacanta. I really appreciate it. Oh, yes, yes. So I'm going to head over to poster session 12, but Thank please um, feel free to stay here and answer questions and also go over to the um, poster, excuse me, poster session presenter slash participant booth for networking. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>